So Jamal, just the overall assessment, you, pass coverage, how'd you guys feel you did uh, this past Saturday? Um, I thought we, we did okay. Um, you know, we definitely can be better in spots. Um, I think situational awareness is something that uh, we, we can improve on. Um, I thought we did snug up and play tight to balls that were caught. So you, you didn't necessarily see a lot of catch and run. Um, if there was a reception, it was more of a bang bang play. And so, you know, although you're not making a play on the ball, you'd like to make sure that you can minimize the damage by at least tackling it immediately. And um, we we're able to do that. Um, but again, we're wanting to limit completions. And so, I'm never going to be happy, no matter matter how many incompletions there are. Uh, for me, the standard is about as high as it can be, and uh, and so we can get better there. Next question is from Chuck Landon. Go ahead, Chuck. Coach, address the kind of problems that Charlie Brewer is going to present for your secondary. Yeah, uh, he he's a a chain mover. Uh, in, in a lack of a better term, he just he doesn't necessarily wow you with anything specifically, but he is really sound at just about everything. He can move the ball with his feet. Um, he obviously manages the offense really well. Um, he's shown the ability to make all of the throws. And so, uh, you know, for that, he's not he's not single faceted. He's multifaceted. And so that that presents its problem. Um, and he has he has some good targets. And so. When you got a guy who knows where to go with the ball, um, is savvy, um, has the experience that he has, and then has targets that can make plays, um, that presents his problem. Next up is Cody Nesper. I asked uh, Coach Leslie about this, but I want to get your perspective too. Um, what does having a, a really elite linebacker do for a defense? Uh, <laughs> an elite player, period. Uh, does a lot for a defense, a middle linebacker, a will linebacker, those two positions. I think if you've got guys who are elite there, it obviously strengthens everything that you do from the run game to the pass game. We know that linebackers have to be able to do both. They've got to be able to get in coverage. They've got to be able to rush the passer. They've got to be able to fit run gaps. And so when you've got a guy who can be able to do all three and really do it at an elite fashion, um, it makes you better on, on not only the front end, but the back end. Back to you, Greg. So, Jamal, how difficult is it when you when it's a new staff, you only got one game of film on them, and that was sort of a, a blowout, so they probably didn't show their whole package. So how right. far back do you go? Do you go back to North Carolina film, Southern right. Miss film? What, what do you do to try to yeah. scout this? It's like any other thing, man. It's all information gathering, as I said last week. And so we're going to dig about as far back as we can to make sure that we gather, gather as much information as we can in order to be able to put together a decent game plan. Um, obviously, North Carolina film um, is out there. Obviously, the first game is out there. And really just games throughout the careers and, of, of the coordinator and the head coach, uh, just making sure that we try to build a portfolio, as I said last week, that we feel good enough to where we can make calls and coverages and fronts um, that are sound and that, able to, that we're able to play uh, just about anything that we get on game day. We'll go to John. Yeah, Coach, um, they ran for 200 yards last week. Um, you know, you mentioned Fedora. Um, is the big concern there um, trying to sneak guys up to stop the run game and all of a sudden they hit you down the field with a play pass or something like that because they still got those outside guys? Is that your number one concern? Yeah, well, I mean, in this conference, that's, that's a concern every week. I mean, every team has a back who's, who's noteworthy and, and at least two receivers, at least that also can take the top off and really do some damage if you don't, if you don't handle things correctly. And so this week is no different. Um, they've got talented skill players. Um, they've got a quarterback who can make the throws. They've got an offensive line who's much improved. Um, and, and so again, you, you've got to be able to cover it all, as you said, um, whether it be fitting run and the pass game. And so that's, that's where as, as a defensive coach, we, we lose our hair or it turns gray either or. Uh, you know, Jordan mentioned too. He, he thinks you're going to probably see more tempo because they got a experienced quarterback, a guy that's played whatever, however many games in the Big Twelve. That's something you got to go into thinking about too. Yeah, I would imagine. Uh, again, tempo is a, is a thing of 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 today, right? It's in vogue. Um, they've been a team that's been able to do it and do it at a high fashion. Um, we see it in, in practice as well. Um, we also utilize tempo at times, and so. You know, again, it's used so that you can kind of catch defenses off guard. You want guys to have their eyes out of place and 
you want to catch guys not doing what they should be doing on that play. And so, you know, we practice against it. It'd be something that we'll work towards making sure we're clean at this week as well, um, being that we would expect that we'll get a fair amount from them. Yep, would agree. Go ahead, Mike. Hey, Jamal, I have two for you. Um, one is about your, your fishing expedition last week to try to get to know Illingworth and looking at his high school stuff. Um, how handy did that come in and, and how much did that help your guys? And then um, this is a really nitpicky thing, but because uh, Fortune looked like he did a pretty good job on Wallace, but a key play is sort of a scramble drill, and he does everything right except the one thing that probably has to happen. I don't know how you coach that in that situation because overall he probably had a good game, and that almost seems largely out of his hands in that spot too. Yeah. So – Firstly, the quarterback last week, um, you know, digging back, I, th I think we did have a beat on what he was capable of. Um, I think he did a lot of the same things in our game that he did within the first matchup um, and showed the ability to keep his poise and make a play uh, when needed. I thought we defended him fairly well um, for the majority of the game. And then uh, I guess to your second, your second point, um, you know, that play not necessarily on Nick Troy. We asked him to plaster. And so what, what happens is, you win the first play, and then the quarterback has to scramble. So now it's time to win the second play. And so what you have to do is you have to locate the nearest receiver, and basically it turns into man coverage. And, uh, you know, that, that didn't take place on that play. Um, I wouldn't necessarily put it all on Nick Troy. Um, but, again, we've got to execute um, even leading up to that point for it not to get to that point. Um, but, again, we'd like to have that one back, and I'd, I'd agree. We, we'd love to play it differently. Back to you, John. Last one for me. What was your biggest takeaway from last week, and what are the, the you can use to to build on for your defense for the rest of the year? Yeah, I think I think the biggest takeaway from last week is we did so many things to not lose to not win that game, and still had a chance there in the end. And so what that says is that if we can clean up those things, um, offensively, defensively, and special teams, that we we have something special going on here. Uh, but it's going to take us to clean those up, and it's it, it takes the work. You've got to come in. You've got to be selfless. You've got to really self-reflect and figure out where, where things went wrong. Um, go back to the drawing board, fix them, and uh, change your best the next time out. And so that's what the Mountaineers do, and uh, that's what we plan on doing this week. Any other questions for Coach Adai? Go ahead, Mike. You're, um, you're working with Spears now, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Um, Tyke was, you know, kind of new last year and, and put in quickly mm -hmm. early in the season. And I'm guessing not a lot asked him to do what he was, you know, asked to do and don't grow that very much. Um, mm -hmm. He seems like he's capable of handling a ton of things that you can throw at him. Um, how much more are you doing? How much more can you do with him? I don't know if he'd become a blitzer. Yeah. If you can stick him in man more. It just seems like he has a lot of potential. Yeah. So everything you just mentioned, he did do within the first game. He's played man. He's blitzed. Um, he's played underneath zone coverages. And that's the reason he's there. He's multifaceted. The kid can can really do everything that we ask him to do on the back end. Um, not necessarily is he elite at it all. Everyone has things that they need to clean up. But um, he is for sure um, a jack of all trades at that position and has been asked to do just about everything that you would ask a nickel or a, a slot corner to do.